everyone and you're watching Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Women Now. Now there's a lot of people who serve a need in the community. They could help the homeless, they could serve in the food bank or just help pets on the streets. Now listen to this. The Grateful Garment Project was started to help victims of sexual assault. Today we're talking to the founder Lisa Blanchard to learn more about what really happens in the background. Every three seconds, someone is sexually assaulted in the U.S. 44% of them are kids. Victims are given an exam in which they are stripped of all their clothes and personal belongings and left with usually a paper hospital gown. The GGP restores dignity by providing clothes, shoes, blankets, food, and toiletries. The Grateful Garment Project is a nonprofit that provides victims of sexual assault with clothing, food, grooming items. Mm -hmm. The reason this is necessary is when somebody is a victim of sexual assault and they go in to have a SART exam. SART is an tell acronym. Us, yeah, tell us what SART is. SART is an acronym for Sexual Assault Response Team. So mm -hmm. on TV you would know it like as a rape kit, mm -hmm. right? And when they go in for this process, mm -hmm. they're asked to surrender their clothing for physical evidence. Nobody's going to force anybody to give up their clothing, mm -hmm. but if they don't give up their clothing, then the DNA evidence is not collected, mm -hmm. and the perpetrator can go on to do it again and again. Okay. What we know about people that are sexual uh, perpetrators is they, it's secular. They do it again and again. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to stop them. Right. And so they give up their clothing, mm -hmm. And it leaves them nothing to wear home, so if they don't have somebody to call or to bring them clothes, they literally could have nothing to wear. Mm -hmm. And when I heard about this, I just found that absolutely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Thank you. What gives him the right to expect that? I'd really be looking forward to a night out with the girls. As soon as I saw her, I knew she was my type. She was flaunting herself like you wouldn't believe. Definitely asking for it. I'd felt great going out in that dress. I saw him, fancied him straight away. He bought me a drink and we started flirting. I thought he was lush. We got close on the dance floor and had a few more drinks. She said yes to a drink easily enough. She was all over me. She wasn't holding back on those shots. Then he asked if he could walk me home. I was well chuffed, you know. She let me walk her home. Back for coffee, you know. I was really looking forward to spending time with him alone, just the two of us. I thought she might like it if I took control. A kiss and a cuddle, yeah, but that was all I'd wanted. I'd never wanted it to go that far. And I told him. But he just wouldn't back off. She shouldn't have kissed me like that if she hadn't wanted it to go any further. Why did he have to push it that far? If she hadn't wanted it, she should have said so sooner. You can't get away with leading a guy on like that. I think you would expect sex at the end of a night like that, wouldn't you? Rape, sexual assault. Let's stop blaming the victim. So I was going to Notre Dame Dina Moore up in Belmont, okay. and um, my, I was getting my bachelor's in human services. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing an internship for graduation, we did a capstone project. Okay. And so I, when I heard about this need, I decided to base my capstone project about starting a program for Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. And then it became really apparent into my project that this need was so much more than just where I lived. It mm -hmm. was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I was being approached by other counties. And um, this little class project, then I incorporated it as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. California gave me a nonprofit in a week. Okay. And then um, a couple months later, we were official nonprofit through the IRS. And um, from within a one-year period, we went from working with one facility in Santa Clara County, California, to working with um, people in a demographic region of over 10 million people. Wow. 
and um, it's growing and the need is so big. I had no idea the need was so immense. I met this woman at this uh, woman's retreat mm -hmm. and the, the theme of the retreat was kind of like what's possible in your world okay. and um, I did not know this woman. I just struck up a conversation. It was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I was asking her, you know, what's possible in your world? Because I knew what's possible in my world is I'm going to school. I'm going to become Dr. Lisa. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write books, take over Oprah's job, you know, just mm -hmm. et cetera. And well, that'll be good. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she wouldn't tell me anything. And, mm -hmm. But then she finally said, you know, if I could do anything, I'd start a program like this. And she told me the story of SART. And I was so horrified that I said to her, I will absolutely partner with you to make this happen. Sometimes the SART facility had clothes. Okay. Sometimes they could um, have family members bring them. But okay. a lot of times people don't want to call anybody because sexual assault is right. a, a crime of shame. Right. Or they could end up going home like in a hospital gown. Mm -hmm. Or even worse, when, in places where there's no resources, a paper hospital gown. Wow. And that's completely unacceptable. Think about it. You've just been through the most horrific thing you'll probably ever experience in your life. Mm -hmm. And then to add insult to injury to be sent home in, in a piece of paper is just unacceptable. 80% of the victims of sexual assault know the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. The median age for sexual assault is nine years old. It's not a woman's wow. issue. I remember it very clearly. I always thought that it was my fault. I thought he was just a nice guy. It seemed like he was trying to look out for me. He was drinking a lot. I had never had sex before. I never did feel like this could happen to me. Where we live in California, the median age um, of people that are going through SART exams mm -hmm. are about 14. And this is also true for sex trafficking people because mm -hmm. they're, they're part of people that are being sexually violated. Mm -hmm. And so we provide a lot of resources for minors. It's really sad and unfortunate. And, and it's not just minor girls, it's minor boys. Mm -hmm. And so um, the other thing is, so getting the news out, letting people know that there's this need. Sure. And resources. We're a young organization. We've just been around for two years. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a zero marketing budget. Sure. And so just letting people know, um, people, uh, this organization is completely grassroots run. Mm -hmm. It's run not on grants and corporate donations, but on individuals just like yourself. So one of our greatest avenues for raising money and getting the word out is that we people host a gathering for garments. Okay. And what a gathering for garments is, is you open your home, mm -hmm. you invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, and you invite them to come and have a party of whatever choice you want. And they all bring either a monetary donation or new clothing. And um, then we give a presentation demystifying what sexual assault is, making okay. them aware of what the issue is and what the need is. Because the number one thing I hear from people is, I have no idea. The website is www.gratefulgarment.org. Okay. And it's singular, and it's grateful, like I'm so grateful for you. Okay. We are really grateful for you, <laughs> and thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Good luck. Coming up next. I started playing tabla when I was five years old. You're watching America's first South Asian TV talk show. Don't go away. Women Now will be right back. Namaste, this is Sanjeevani and you're watching me on Women Now, Aaj Ki Nari Ka channel.
Namaskar. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here in the house of Pandit Swapan Chaudhary in San Rafael. All the way from Kolkata, you've been here for 33 years in this country. You're just not making us proud as a community, but you're carrying on the culture, the music, the tradition, and all of that that we are so proud of. First of all, welcome to our show, and then we want to find out more about your life and more about your memories and your journey. Oscar, well, um, yes, it is 33 years. It's, uh, I feel like that I just came maybe two months ago. Yeah, time passed so fast. Um, but I started playing tabla when I was five years old. Wow. Because in my house, um, though everybody in my, our family uh, is medical doctors, um, but there was some kind of uh, music, uh, uh, painting, drama. This, uh, this, you know, uh, everybody was interested with that, and people used to do that. So, but when I was a kid, all my other uh, cousins or brothers, they were doing something else. So my father then decided that I should do music because somehow or other I had some kind of knack towards that because my mom was a great singer in those days you know uh, she was really a professional singer and but after she got married then she couldn't go out and perform because that's the rule uh, everything uh, in the house so I was listening to that listening to that and then one day uh, my father asked my guru Great, great guru. I'm so happy to have a guru like him. And so he was actually playing with my mom and my dad said that you should start teaching him tabla. What do you think defines a great musician? It's the discipline. Mm -hmm. The first thing is discipline and also your love towards music or any kind of any form of art you have to have uh, a love for it and you have to discipline yourself I heard that uh, you used to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 3.30 in the morning when everyone would be sleeping and start practicing and your Guruji came to your house 7 days a week for straight 14 years and you learned a lot from him. What has that really taught you that going through pain, going through pressure, going through you have to do it, going through all of that, how has that shaped you? What have you learned from that? Well, again, there's the same thing. It disciplined me very well and that helped me later on even in my studies you know I did my masters in economics and I never thought that I'll be a musician music will be my profession I never thought about it um, because nobody in my family was uh, you know musician but what it happened is that it was at that time obviously you know, I was a little kid and I didn't want to get up at 4.30 when everybody is sleeping and I am practicing, you know. But it was my dad. Uh, he wanted, he was very, very, very disciplined guy. And he kind of disciplined me, no, you have to do that. And, you know, those days you cannot say anything to your parents. But those days you father. may have hated him, but yeah. now you respect that he yes. forced you to do that. And because a lot of us give up along that the way. Is we true. Feel that but after a few years, um, then I started really liking it. Not loving it, but liking it. And then the more I was doing it, then finally I, you know, fell in love with it. Coming up next, Watching America's first South Asian TV talk show. Don't go away. Women Now will be right back.
Hi, I'm GT. And I'm Kavya. And you're watching Women Now. Remember to eat healthy. I don't want to leave uh, this interview without that very specific question about your form of music and the modern generation music because you maintain the purity of tabla, just pure tabla. And there has been no, nothing but just very pure tabla. Now, with the generation changing, mindset changing, things getting more westernized, fast and all of that. How do you feel about that change and if there is a need to cope up with that and uh, change the way you, you, you use music? Look, if you taste a good food in a good restaurant, every time you will try to go there, so music, whatever it's happening. You see, it's happening, but it's it's coming and going. It's not staying. You see what I'm saying? But music, pure music, what you, were, you just said, that I, I play pure tabla, that I don't know. I try to play pure tabla, but it's a long process. I still feel I'm a little kid. I mean, it's lost. But anyway, uh, pure tabla or pure music is like truth. Can you hide the truth? You cannot. You can hide for temporary, but it will come back. And when it comes back, it will be double, double the size. So whatever is happening, it's all experimental basis. And there is nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying that that shouldn't be, but what I'm trying to say, you can do that, but at the same time, you should also uh, maintain the purity. Look, I did a lot of, um, uh, I played with a lot of different people, with different musicians, um, uh, did a couple of uh, albums with uh, Top Notch. Um, player like Stevie Wonder, uh, Peter Gabriel, a uh, lot of people I did. But it's not that, that you have to, what, how can I say? Blend it to, with that, yeah, you can have I mean, your own if, originality if, and then if go If you with have it. a strong base and if you have that, uh, that uh, discipline and if you know your subject, Blending with other music is not a problem. But if you don't know your music well enough, then it's a problem to blend. Because you don't know what are you doing. Because music is not just a sound. It's beyond sounds. There is something, some aesthetics is there. So if we forget that, then you can. You can do music, but it will be lifeless. Where do you transcend when you are playing? Where do you transcend? Sometimes musicians close their eyes. What are they thinking at that time? Where does it take you? That peak moment when you are attaining the height, where yeah. do you go? It is very difficult to explain what is that, but it is at that point when you are really, you are it's not intentional that you are closing your eyes but it happens because it's it gets so strong and strong and strong it's like some outside force is pulling you from yourself and you at that point enjoying it so much you don't want to come back because you are just in a different it's euphoric a, yeah and, and at that point, it's like uh, you are listening to your music. So that was a delight. I think I learned so much and it connected me back to my childhood and music. And I feel that's freedom when you listen to good music. You are not bound to any uh, pain, sorrow. There's no room for it anymore because you are in that world that is all about freeing your mind and enjoying something that makes you forget everything else. 
So thank you so much for bringing thank such you. lovely thank music you. to all of us over so many years. And I cannot uh, enough thank you for having me thank in your you. house today. Thank you.